Hey, Chris Lipe here. The vocal style of Sam Carter, singing like Sam Carter. This video maybe has been one of the most commonly requested ones since I started doing the sing like uh, vocal videos, and I'm excited to do this one. Sam Carter's range, his dynamics are unparalleled in my opinion. He uses mixed voice, screaming, strategic grit and distortion in a way that I've never heard implemented up until I started getting in to Sam Carter. So I'm really excited to do this video. Take a look in the mirror! And to quote, or maybe slightly misquote, a fellow vocal coach, this type of singing is akin to extreme sports. This is heavy lifting. It takes a lot of precision and a lot of practice. And most importantly, a huge amount of introspection, as all singing does. But the danger with going down the path of singing like guys like Sam Carter is that if you go into it, without a solid grasp on some fundamental singing skills, support, breathing, how to generate distortion without hurting yourself, and there's many more, you're going to mess up your voice. And I don't want that for you. If you want help developing your voice further and getting a solid foundation for singing and aggressive singing too, be sure to click the link below and join my free vocal course. There's lots there. Now this video follows the same format as most of my Sing Like videos, but I've added an extra cool factor to it. You see, Sam Carter's vocals that he does with the architects, particularly on the studio recordings, they are captured in such a way that really brings out the nuances and characteristics of his voice that they want to present on the recording, that he wants to present. They're there. The recordings are just, and the way they're done, are helping to enhance that considerably. Now, I'm not talking about pitch correction. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about the way the vocals are compressed, audio compression, the little bits of subtle distortion, preamp distortion and drive, mic selection, and then reverb and delay are also used to help his voice sit correctly. And if you hear this stuff dry, like you're gonna hear uh, in the examples that I, I share, you're missing a key auditory component to really taking in the most of particularly Sam Carter's, in this case, his voice. But also, this is an important lesson to learn whenever we're listening to studio recordings from vocalists, there's things that are dialed in in a certain way to bring out the best in that singer's voice. So what I've done in this video, the vocals that you hear me demonstrate on this mic in the how to get there sections of each example are going to be completely raw. So you get to hear all the warts and see the process for getting and implementing some of the ways that Sam Carter sings. But in the when I'm on the SM7B, when I'm on the Shure and standing up, I'm still singing just like I always am, but I have used some of the same effects to help you hear what those things sound like with those elements included. Hearing contrasts like this as a learner for me has been super helpful because there's certain things that I latch onto in a produced vocal that I'm like, oh man, I can't, I can't do that with my voice. Well, actually the vocalist isn't doing that with his voice. That's being helped or propped up by the way it was recorded. And I really want you to hear that in this context. If you put too much on your own raw singing voice, that's another thing that's gonna cause tension, it's gonna cause confusion and defeat and ultimately could end up in injury, which again, I don't want for you. And one more thing before we get into the first example, don't imitate, sing like. I've talked about this in all my other videos. We don't wanna go into it with the idea that we're going to imitate or impersonate Sam Carter. That's not possible. We wanna draw things out of his voice, practice some of the same ways that he practices so that we can get uh, similar vibes in our own voice or be influenced and inspired 
by his voice. It's not going to sound like Sam Carter. Let's just get that out there right now. It's going to sound like a cooler and inspired version of whoever is taking these techniques and mindsets and putting them into their own voice. Let's get started. Example one. Chesty Mix, right out of the gate, he's uh, incorporating extreme breakup and grit and aggression with mixed voice. And I'm fighting with broken bones! Now, I've done other videos on the channel on mixed voice and singing aggressively, so be sure that after this video, you go check those out. But I'm going to lead you in to how to get here with sort of the standard voice. It does require that you understand some of the concepts of mixed voice. If we want to get to this level, we have to start clean. We have to develop our mix so that we can hit these notes cleanly first. And there's that C sharp. We want to go all the way up there. We're going to take it slow and clean first. And then we're gradually going to put the grit or the breakup over the top as opposed to just going hard on our vocals. That's not going to work long term or even short term. So we're going to start with And I'm fighting with broken bones. Now, that <laughs> sounds more like James Labrie from Dream Theater, or maybe a little bit of Getty Lee from Rush. That's okay for now. Again, we're not imitating. We are dissecting the technique, and we'll get closer as this progresses. Okay, so we want to combine this idea of mixed voice, high, clean, thin mix. That's not even a chesty mix yet. But now we're going to start adding the chest and the grit in. So... We're starting with this row, row, dying cat. I've talked about this in other videos. We're imitating a dying cat. Row, row, or we're imitating the worried old woman. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, what works best for you is fine, as long as we can get that general feel. What that involves is a lot of compression, holding back air, like that and then also a higher larynx position. This isn't a tense larynx position, it's just higher and brighter. Ah! Gets, it gets our face out of the way. We're also well supported with our abdominal, our lower abdominal muscles, our poop muscles. We're bearing down and we're using our focus of our mind to bear down and accepting the energy that comes up as a side effect. That's how we're thinking about it. That gets the tension off of our neck. We've talked about this before. So with those things in mind, and if you want more on all of this, again, that's where my free vocal course comes in and where some of my other YouTube videos come in. And I'm fighting with... Now, that's a C-sharp five. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit to demonstrate the progression of how we're gonna combine extreme breakup with this clean mix. Ah, there we go. Ah, ah, ah. Now, I'm gonna engage my vocal break. Ah, okay, so I started. Ah, Now you can hear the pitch happening and that break, even though, and I'm doing it on purpose where I'm creating this uh, <laughs> sort of crazy sound because I want you to hear the progression of how to get there. It's not like every vocalist just goes in and nails it like this. There's lots of takes that happen that are, are different and they don't sound quite as dialed in. You're hearing the best of the best right here. Ah, let's take a little higher. Ah, There it is at the end there. And I'm fighting! As you're dialing this in, you must be willing to crack. You must be willing to sound stupid. The, the, way, the reason I'm approaching this extreme breakup from this perspective is that it is, uh, as, the, as the voice breaks, it's allowing airflow through that has previously... Uh, come, that is coming from here, it's allowing the air through in a way that then is allow, allowing you to engage the part above your vocal cords, not your primary cords, to generate 
like that to generate that sound. Ah! That sound, now my voice is, is fine, that sound, that breakup that you hear is not coming from my vocal cords. The tone is coming from my vocal cords, but not the, the breakup itself. The breakup is actually the, the tissues above resonating in a way that is, in some ways, protecting the vocal cords from getting messed up. There's that C sharp, right? The distortion is happening above the larynx. And I'm fighting with broken bones. Next. Now the skies have been so, same song, uh, similar example, except he's going even higher and. The words make the phrase a little diffi more difficult to sing. He's going all the way up to that D5. And now the skies have been blacked out! Now let's take this line from cleaner to more distorted and aggressive as well. You can see the progression, hear the progression, and then try it for yourself. And now the skies have been blacked out! There it is, clean with a minimal amount of distortion. I'm, I'm bearing down extremely. I'm using a well-supported mixed voice. And that being a D5, you know, yeah! I can get fairly chesty and fairly distorted with, with that note. Skies! I can eventually dial in that D, and that's where we want to get before we try the whole phrase. Being able to hit notes in the right way with the right feel before we attempt the whole phrase. So there was the D in, and I, I started clean and then dialed in the grit. It, it, this really works. And now the skies have been blacked out. Another thing that really helps me with these higher aggressive phrases is to siren up to them. And now the skies have been blacked out! Even in the midst of breaking, and you heard me do it in that last example, where we are, we're not going, for, I mean, Sam Carter is, is just so like, almost like the notes are being played on a keyboard. They're just so accurate and dialed in. We, can, we can't start there. We have to sort of approach uh, what he's doing with reverence and humility and practice getting up to those sorts of things. And I think that's where the siren re-entering mix on every note. And now the skies! Doing it clean first, being okay to be all, you know, weird sounding. And now the skies have been blacked out! And then with each one, getting that feel to where it starts clean, and then you add that, um, that aggression, that break-induced distortion over the top. Next. Oh, so here, he is going between a clean, spoken... It's around the wee, 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 but he's not going for, ah, he's not singing a note. And then he's going into this distorted scream, kind of every other note. We found your fingerprints all over the trailer! Now, this is actually a fun exercise. And what's really neat about it is that we can practice going from clean to gritty in a way that doesn't require us to maintain pitch, which in some ways is easier uh, and so we can use this as a way to discover how our voice can be healthily broken up in the context of even cleaner notes, which I think is, is really neat. So here's how I engage my voice in practicing this clean to scream sort of thing without the context of actual singing. Hey, 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 hey! What we're going to do is we're going to intentionally try to break up first. And again, sounding super stupid. Uh, one of the other videos I, I did on this is uh, comparing this sort of approach to yodeling. But instead of yodeling, 
for yodeling's sake, we are discovering where we can rest in the middle of our head resonance and our chest resonance. And that's where the, ah! that's where that cool sound comes from as it's dialed in and as we introspectively work through our own voice to find that happy medium, that happy middle. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm, I'm going to do that ugly pseudo yodeling thing. We found your fingerprint all over the trigger. See, I'm not doing this. This is a very different, and even though it sort of sounds like when it's all dialed in, it's kind of tough to tell the difference, but I'm not doing this. We found our fingerprints all over the, where I'm like going hard on my vocal cords. When, I, when I'm doing that, and you can even hear it in my voice, that didn't feel very good. But when we do this break thing, Ah, uh, we've... One of the words. We found, we found! We found! It's actually a... A cooler, more... Uh, broad and aggressive sounding breakup. Now there, when I just did that, we found... I'm going from a clean... So, sort of pseudo note to that breakup, there's less, uh, there's less ridiculousness in there because I've tightened it up. But you have to start with that feeling. What I'm doing is I'm pushing. Once I find, once I find that break point, I push in, I lean into it. And as I, as I support it even better, the chance of me going, uh, are less because it's more well supported. You have to have your diaphragmatic support down to do this though. We found, we found your fingerprints all over the trigger. Now that, as you can hear, doesn't hurt my voice at all. It's the exact, it, it, it's actually sort of relaxing because you're, you're taking um, vocal positioning that is actually closer to that then you are this, uh, what we hear as this aggressive, chesty, you know, killing your voice sound. Next. This one's great because it's kind of an extension of the last line that we went over. But he ends with a really neat, longer scream. Take a look in the mirror! So, let's approach it the same way, like I was talking about. We have take is broken up, take uh, and then look is broken up, and then in the is regular. So if we were to ridiculousify this, <laughs> take a look in the mirror, right? That's where we want to start till we get the feel. Then we'll gradually bring this in. Again, we're not going hard on our vocal cords. The distortion should not feel like it's coming from below your voice box. If it starts to feel gravelly, tense, and burnt out down here, that means you're, you're going hard on your vocal cords. We don't want to do that. We want to be above. We want to be using the mechanisms and resonance and muscles above. This also helps us separate, which I'll talk about in another video, tension from intensity. We want to be intense, right? That's the type of vocals we're singing, but we don't want tension, particularly tension surrounded on competing with our vocal cords to get in the way. Take! Take a look! Take a look in the mirror! So cool. Say, take, 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 take a look in the mirror! Could do that all day long. Because again, you're borrowing from the almost relaxed state of your head voice. The mirror! Next. Don't be surprised to find a price on your head. Now this one, it's interesting because he is for a moment there going hard on his vocals. But just for a second. It's, it's more of a, a traditional, uh, he's using traditional vocal fry in there. Don't be surprised. 
Don't be surprised, prize! Right? Don't be surprised to find a price on your ass! And then he goes, you know, full on into the other style that we've been talking about, or the other pr approach. Don't be surprised to find a price on And then price. Don't be surprised, prize! Yeah! That, right there, is... It's come about from the same way, but we're not pushing up to our breakpoint, and essentially we're bringing our breakpoint down. Don't be surprised to find a price on your head! So, to do that, we would do this. It's a lower note! It's a cleaner distortion. Another way to look at it is uh, entering it from the vocal fry perspective, which would be... Uh, that's fry. And then we're going to go... Uh, real, real soft. Uh, right? So what I'm doing, I, again, I'm engaging that area above my larynx, but I'm using far less airflow to dial in and make sure I have the feel right. Then you put in the support. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised to find a price. You know, and he kind of goes up there. And then as he raises in pitch, he approaches that where normally would be his break. And then engages that for the scream. And you can hear it's almost this in my example, too. You can hear this, this sense where it is breaking right but we've broken into screamville instead of our head voice don't be surprised to find a price on your head don't be surprised to find a price on your head next cold still burns underneath my skin ah. now this is what i was referring to at the beginning amazingly dynamic Singer. I mean, this is pleasing and relaxing sounding. Uh, a nice respite from the most of what, particularly in their newer stuff, is just this amazingly sensory, engaging, heavy music. Cold still burns underneath. And might I also say that it's because of these moments that the more aggressive and awesome stuff that we've been covering does so well in the recordings. His dynamic approach, the songwriting, is what makes everything so interesting. There are other bands out there that don't get that, that it's just, it's all screaming, it's all pitchless stuff, or, you know, no notes. And to me, I kind of just start to go, uh, okay, I, once I've heard the first 30 seconds of the album, I've heard everything. But that's not the case with Sam Carter and The Architects. There's enough dynamics and enough variety and enough engagement in the, particularly the singing that keeps me coming back all the time. So let's talk about the example. Cold still burns underneath my skin. Cold, cold still burns underneath my skin, skin. Cold still burns underneath my skin. Here, we are adopting some of the same ideas that I've talked about in other videos where we are, we're going to get our face out of the way a little bit. We're not cold still burns underneath. We're very articulate, even though he's relaxed. Cold still burns on, and whether he smiles or not while he's singing this, I don't, I don't know. But I have to get my face out of the way in order to make this sound work because I've got a lot of skin. Cold still burns underneath my... Now, the, the, the ability to have this kind of tone in the context of the other things that we've been talking about means you have to sort of detach from that way of singing. If you listen to Robert Plant, particularly earlier, when he goes low, he still sounds with that high larynx, high larynx mixed sort of thing. Listen to, you know, the end of Stairway to Heaven, for example. Here, we are detaching from the idea that we're, that, that that type of voice even exists. This is important, and I don't think a lot of vocalists think about this sort of thing. When we want to sing low and contemplative, 
we want to be fully engaged with chest. Even though we've just spent a bunch of time up here, up there, right? We want to be engaged down here. Yeah, cold still burns. So what I like to do is not just sing the example, but be inspired by the example. Cold still burns, light and bright, underneath my skin, underneath my skin, cold still burns. And then, every once in a while, create an opportunity for me to switch on to the other side and then go right back to this. This was particularly helpful live, by the way. Cold still burns underneath my skin. Cold still burns underneath. Cold still burns. Cold still burns. Cold still burns. Cold still burns. This is also part of being inspired by Sam Carter or whatever vocalist we're working with and infusing it into our own voice, taking that inspiration and infusing it into our own voice and not stopping with merely the goal to imitate. Next. You said you cheated. Now, this has a lot of sprinklings from the other things that we've talked about in this video. I really like the way it goes, it progresses up. You said you cheated death! You said you cheated death! Again, we're starting clean, getting the notes down, feeling how they feel in clean mix. And this is allowing us to dial in our support, which is the most important thing before we start adding the other stuff. Otherwise, we just go hard on our vocals and burn out and then can't sing it anyway, right? We have to be able to sing it in clean mix first. But what he provides us here are clues in how to sort of build up to that level of intensity that he did in the examples at the beginning of this video, right? Those are just high all the time, uh, you know, relatively speaking. And sometimes it's hard to to sort of get right there, right? These, this example includes notes that are much more doable for the mere mortal singer. You said you cheated, God. So, you, you said you cheated, death. Fine, let's bring in some of these other aspects that I've been talking about. You said, you said you cheated, And now dialing that in with that break point is what's going to help me be more and more consistent as I learn how each line is supposed to feel. I can't stress enough, practice, practice, practice. None of this stuff is instant. This stuff, like I said at the beginning, it's extreme singing. It is uh, what you hear Sam Carter doing is a product of years and years of specific introspection, practice, discipline, trial and error. And that's what I'm hoping to illustrate here a bit on these videos. There's no substitute for the work and the introspection that goes into creating vocals like this. Thanks so much for joining me for unpacking the style of Sam Carter. Really enjoyed it as always. Again, be sure to leave comments below. Let me know other artists you'd like me to dissect in this similar fashion. I love doing it. And be sure again, if you want to take your voice to the next level to join my free vocal course linked below. We'll see you for more.